Name from the Norse myth, mm. which is the uh, rainbow bridge, which connecting to the God's world, to the human world. Right, right. So we want to connecting the D apps and the public chain in the middle. If you want to update Tron or Ether, it's not easy. Every time, like Clayton make a new mainnet, Vibra make a new mainnet, Facebook make a new mainnet, it's a little of the uh, revolution from Ethereum. That's the problem for the first four or five years. But the DFs actually have to concentrate on the service, not on the yeah, tech the side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We give a uh, option to the DFs. So if you want to use Cosmo Chain, if you want to use Polkadot, we give the option for them. If you want to put Tron, Clayton, Vibra, we give the option for them. You guys are like very, very undercover at the moment, right? I mean, <laughs> which is the real state of this video? A little bit of secret. Though. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we work for four years mostly with the Korean government. You, the guys, like uh, in a way, a little bit new in the, you know, on the block, right? Yes. yes. So why is everybody so excited about you, you know, uh, appearing on the stage? Yeah. Uh, in this year, February, we make our first demo. Uh, in front of Ethereum Foundation at that time. And it was quite uh, fascinating because we showed to Ethereum, when you use Bifrost, uh, combining the Ethereum, it's about uh, 40 times faster wow. than the original Ethereum and the gas fee go down. for zero. Yeah. Wow. And the gas fee go down about 75%. Yeah, nice great to meet to you. you. Yeah. yeah, great to see you. Like, yeah. Thanks for uh, for squeezing a little bit of time, you know, from a business no schedule. No problem. <laughs> great yeah. to see you in Seoul yeah. finally, yeah. because yeah. we met like in pretty much everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. Singapore, and Singapore, Shanghai, I think, Shanghai, and some, yeah. some other places. Yeah. So um, you, uh, I mean, it, it just so happens that uh, lately we've been uh, doing interviews with lots of projects that are already mm -hmm. known in the mm -hmm. space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they already listed, you know, mm -hmm. something is happening. Mm -hmm. You, the guys, like uh, mm -hmm. in a way, a little mm -hmm. bit new in the, you know, on the block, right? Yes, yes. Uh, We're not you, listed yet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So can you say a couple of words about uh, what your project is all about mm -hmm. and why is everybody so excited about you, huh? you know, uh, appearing mm -hmm. on the stage? Yeah. So our project name is Bifrost. Bifrost uh, yes. We are a little different with other projects. Uh, so we are in the scene for about four years. So we are not the new guys who make Very a sure. new company and saying we are a big uh, revolution in the blockchain. Mm -hmm. We work for four years mostly with the Korean government, make proof of concept for the new blockchain, the government using the private chains. And we are very familiar with the blockchain technology. but. Uh, we are very friendly to the public chain at the same time mm -hmm. and we are uh, thought we have to uh, uh, give some uh, effort to the revolution in the public chain at the same time. So we decided to start a new uh, project named Bifrost. Bifrost actually from the name from the Norse myth mm. which is the uh, rainbow bridge which connecting to the God's world to the human world right, right. so we want to connecting the D apps and the public chain in the middle mm. so normally now everyone's saying uh, second layer solution but actually we are more in the middle layer and we are uh, different with other second layer solutions okay so middle mm. middle layer is uh, just correct me if I'm wrong this mm. is pretty much about an idea where you 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 place in the in the situ, situation right yeah. where you can plug in pretty much any protocol yes. and then connect any DAP yes. that would be capable of uh, mm. you know plug and play their solutions. Yes, Is that that's right? that's quite the right answer. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, the reason why we can do this is uh, when you think about it in a development way. Uh, blockchain when one blockchain make uh, announce their mainnet, mm -hmm. they are fixed in the mainnet right. so they like a, it's not in the traditional way you can but you can say it is a hardware in a development way mm -hmm. because for hard fork it or updated it it's very hard you have every time more than at least 50 percent of the consensus to update it mm -hmm. so it's much more difficult for example you want to update your android phone you can just put it in your network mm -hmm. but if you want to update Tron or ether it's not easy that's the reason why Ether, Ethereum is still struggling to updating yes. it to 2.0. Mm -hmm. 
So every time like Clayton make a new mainnet, Vibra make a new mainnet, Facebook make a new mainnet, it's a little of the uh, revolution from Ethereum. They're right. based on Ethereum, but they make change. But when the mainnet come out, they're fixed. Mm -hmm. So we think that's the problem for the first four or five years. That's the reason why blockchain cannot put it our real connection to the real world uh, because they are fixed when the mainnet come out. Okay. So we want to give uh, the more flexibility and more utility to the dApps mm -hmm. to combining the new revolutions like when Ether 2.0 come out or Clayton come out. Every time the dApps have to change the code. Right. But the dApps actually have to concentrate on the service, not on the yeah, tech the side. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are want to give the flexibility in the middle to making a little more softer to the hardware of the blockchain. I see. So let me get it straight. Mm -hmm. So basically, when, as the industry evolves, mm -hmm. suppose that there is new dApps that get on your platform. Yeah. When new protocols would uh, have uh, some, I don't know, uh, some updates and so yes. on and so forth, uh, with your platform, it would be just a matter of uh, switching maybe to a faster or uh, you know a more updated solution. Is that what you're saying? So basically, switching between Ethereum to I don't know Cosmos or to EOS or something like that. Yeah. So depending on who is basically you know better servicing. We you at the we moment. we give a uh, option to the apps. So if you want to use Cosmos Chain, if mm -hmm. you want to use Polkadot, we give the option for them. If you want to go Tron, Clayton, Vibra, we give the option for them. Right. So they can choose. And when you just update the code through Bifrost, mm -hmm. we didn't make any blocks. Mm. So we didn't make any blockchain. We have no consensus. They the DApps can choose which main public chain they want to use to their consensus. Okay. And we are combining it. And every time they want to update it, or there's an update of the main chain, we giving the uh, new options for them. Mm, so they can update it or they can change actually from Ether to Clayton, mm -hmm. Clayton to Pulkada. It's up onto the apps. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds very reasonable at least. Yes. Uh, how far are you in the development process? What, what's your stage now? So in the development side, uh, in this year, February, we make our first demo mm -hmm. uh, in front of Ethereum Foundation at that time. And it was quite uh, fascinating because we showed to Ethereum when you use Bifrost, uh, combining the Ethereum, it's about uh, four times faster wow. than the original Ethereum and the gas fee go down. for zero. Yeah. Wow. And the gas fee go down about 75%. Jeez. And in the middle, it's now, that was about seven months ago. Mm -hmm. And now we can make about 300 times faster Ethereum network. Wow. And now we can actually combining many other protocols together. Mm -hmm. So in Osaka, we will announce our new tech demonstration and we will show to the public combining more than two public chain together. Interesting. So, yeah, so I'm not sure if I can talk about the detail, <laughs> which is the release date of this video. Uh, in a couple of days, I would say. But yeah, let's let's uh, let's uh, hold it uh, uh, to the uh, uh, let's say uh, a little bit of secret. Then. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think we can we will open it in Osaka, so you can see it. We can Beautiful. we will yeah we will combine actually four public chain together in one DF. Excellent, yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. And uh, from what I heard as well mm. is that mm. you also launching like. Uh, probably one of the most successful games or something. Is that the case on, 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 on your platform? Yes, yes, we have many partnerships. Mm -hmm. Mostly we didn't announce about it, but we are working with not only games, but games, of course, we are working with several game companies, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the highest network transaction volume in Ethereum or Tron. Mm -hmm. And what we are helping them is we giving them more scalability, of course, and low gas fee. Because course, that's yeah. very important for them. Of and course. in the middle, we, we trying to give into some interoperability, especially in the NFT tokens. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, you are launch your game in Ether, you launch your game in Tron and Clayton. That's all the three, uh, these blockchains are different, like different servers. Totally. And the tokens, the NFT tokens cannot be tradable. Mm -hmm. The Ether users cannot trade it from the Clayton users. Right. And what we are giving them, it's we giving a marketplace who can trade it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're making lots of uh, partnership in the gaming industry. 
can you say a couple of words about your investment uh, strategy and uh, like w what's your stage at the moment? I mean, I know you were you're mm -hmm. pretty much closing today, right? <laughs> With all the round. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you've been like oversubscribed so yeah, many yeah. times. Yeah. So uh, we we have a old, uh, we have a quite long history, not really long, but in the blockchain space, we are quite long four yes. years. Is so uh, some people, especially in the investment industry, knows well about us, and we was get we got well funded by KIP Korean Investment Partners. They are the biggest VC in Korea, mm. so we was quite famous in the VC field in Korea, okay. but uh, we was not so famous in the outside of Korea. So we try to uh, travel about two three months. And actually, um, now was uh, today was the uh, deadline uh, from the first uh, private sale mm -hmm. for the first round. Um, I'm not sure how many people I didn't check net <laughs> <laughs> while <laughs> while the money, but anyway. And uh, for now, after the first round, we will uh, we will uh, take some time because we want to concentrate on the tech side. Of course. And uh, we have a demo in Osaka, and we will go to the San Francisco Blockchain Week. Mm -hmm. And after that, maybe we will do another public uh, private round, or we will change to a public round. It depends. So okay. uh, for now, we uh, in the sale, we are not fix it yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, from what we know, again, mm -hmm. Osaka is a big thing that is happening next week with mm -hmm. DevCon. Yeah. Uh, you, mm -hmm. as you said, you are mm -hmm. going to have lots of announcements there and mm -hmm. uh, it does sound like you you guys are like very very undercover at the moment right I mean there's no information about the valuation no information about listing uh, no community really uh, yes. engagement and yes. so on and so forth yeah. I, when are you planning to do this uh, we're planning to starting our marketing and over the covering uh, mostly after the Osaka DevCon because okay. we want to show the community to first prove our technology and then after that we want to make some supporters so I think that's the right way right uh, we don't want to um, make to the uh, convince the community that we have the tech so just believe us we want mm. to show it something right so that's the reason why we start planning to making the community after the Osaka DevCon yeah. but actually uh, in Korean blockchain week we didn't plan to do any stuff but the organizer was a close friend so <laughs> she actually actually there was a quite a big hype in Korea mm -hmm. in, in, especially in the industry so they asked us for doing speaker stuff so we decided let's do just leak a little mm -hmm. and we starting a uh, little booth and a uh, little speaker stuff right. here but uh, it will be a very limited information okay. uh, the real start I think will be from of Osaka course. yeah okay mm -hmm. uh, a couple of words about your team mm -hmm. uh, you you already mentioned that mm -hmm. you're quite a few years mm -hmm. already down mm -hmm. the road mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. uh, but I also know that your mm -hmm. tech team and mm -hmm. the like the, mm -hmm. uh, the professors mm -hmm. who are on, on board mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. are quite exceptional mm -hmm. yeah so I, I think it's fair I talk lots about our CTO so yeah. our CTO is a current professor in Korea uh, and he is uh, he was a researcher in Carnegie Mellon okay. and he is actually one of the co-founder of a hacking team named PPP mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many people know about it but in the hackers field PPP is quite famous okay. uh, he founded it and he won several times the world hackathon wow. with the team mm -hmm. and after that he come to Korea back to Korea for doing the professor stuff mm -hmm. but actually he is quite famous in the security side mm. so he he doing a uh, several time judge for uh, hackathons mm -hmm. so our developers are mostly very young the reason is uh, we pick only the best who win the hackathon because our CTO was the mm -hmm. judge there so he so uh, he has this access to like yes. the brightest talents yes. at the very early yes. stage great and then That's actually good. he picked them and he teach them for several years mm -hmm. and now we hire them Excellent. and in same time in Korea there is a military service oh, okay. so you have to go for military service for two years mm. for young people but uh, if you are have a license from the government you can don't you can skip the uh, military service and mm -hmm. do an alternate service to doing walk-in in the company okay and we are in the last stage to getting it oh, and after beautiful. we get it it will be much more easier for us mm -hmm. to hiring uh, young and very uh, bright uh, developers yeah because they yeah. would have an additional incentive of yes course, to not yeah. to skip this yes. years yeah also so thanks very much for for this very interesting and exciting insights mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. definitely follow you know what's what's going to happen happen after Osaka and of course you know uh, anything mm -hmm. we can support you with our part of the world uh, let us know yeah. <laughs> thanks thank you for the interview all the best luck man yeah. thank <laughs> you yeah.